Thank you. Like I said, when you go to today's Moodle page, <coughs> you can download the, uh, the project info, which I just passed out. Also, these are the notes for the topics that I'm going over. These will go over the different types of tools that, they, that we use. And if you are taking notes, there are some things about these tools that you're going to have to remember uh, to effectively use them, particularly using the clone stamp, using some of the healing brush tools, these different things. And this will give you an idea of what the tool does and how you can use it. What's going to make this project different from the other projects that we've done? It's no longer going to be just a follow these steps and you get you know, your end result. With these, I'm going to give you photographs and when you download them, they're a zip file that look like this. Completely messed up, completely torn, it's got spots and everything, and you're going to try to recreate these as best as possible. Well, there's no steps that I can give you to say, do this, this, and this. It's going to be kind of up to you, your best judgment, to, uh, to work on each one of these projects. So I'm just going to show you the tools and how you can use them, and I'll leave it up to you. I will let you know, I'm not looking for every single detail to some of these projects. Some of these are going to be a little more distorted, easier to do than others. Some of these have, like there's this one. This is probably going to be the most challenging one. You've got to re-piece it all together and recreate it. Whereas something like, like this one that's just maybe faded and has one little torn edge, that's something that can be done very quickly. So when you do work on these, just try to get it as best as possible. I'm not looking for every single thing to, um, that's wrong with the picture to be, uh, to be touched up. All good? Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see what damage we can do with it. Alright, same as usual, I'm going to have my layers palette open off to the side. Uh, let's, let's start off with this one. This will be a relatively easy one, and it's a common problem that a lot of older photographs may have. Now when I see a photograph like this, the problem that it is, it's that it's way, way too light. If you want to use a good industry term, you can say it has low contrast. It has, you know, darks and lights, but there's, it's all mostly just kind of a low, low to medium gray uh, that's with it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to make it pop. I want to bring out the, the, the darks and make them much darker, and I want to make the lights much, much lighter. Here's how you can do this in Photoshop. Uh, let's get rid of some of these palettes so I can see it. To, uh, to make something pop, we need to adjust what's called the levels of a photograph. And to find this, we're going to go to Image and Adjustments. And most of the, uh, the adjustments that we're going to be doing, we're going to be found under this drop menu. And the one we're going to look for is called Levels. And it's going to bring up something that looks like this. This is called a histogram, is the uh, industry term for it. This little thing right here, every photograph has what I would call a mountain range to it. and It's black and white and it gives you kind of an area of, uh, of pixels. What a histogram is telling you is it's a um, oh, kind of a census on all the lights and the dark pixels. And so when you see this darker area, see this white, or white arrow down at the bottom right hand side? This would be the lighter area and this is the darker area. And so you can see there's a lot of, quote, light pixels on this overall image and very, very few dark pixels on this image. And so this kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like. Here's how to fix the image. On the far left-hand side, you've got a black arrow. This represents the darker area. When I click on this arrow, I can drag, and I can adjust the starting and stopping point. You see what's happening as I drag it towards this side? It's getting much, much darker. So whenever you open up a histogram, you want to drag this arrow, what I call closer to the base of the mountain range, and every image is going to have one of these. I'll show it to you later. Let's do the same thing for the lighter side. If I click on the white arrow, I can drag it inward. Now you can see the lighter pixels are getting much lighter. If you go too far, you can get it really washed out. But we're going to put this at the base of that mountain range right there. This middle one is your midtones, and you can kind of play back and forth in between those two. But if I say OK, now let's look at our image. I'll zoom back out. This is the way it was before. I'm hitting undo, really light. Here it is after, much, much darker. And all we had to do was go to image, adjustments, and I adjusted the levels to be able to do that from there. So that's your first kind of real easy way to make things pop. It also works on color ones, which I'll show you in, uh, in just a second. Second thing that's wrong with this one is it's got a big, nasty rip at the top right-hand corner. 
here's a great way to, uh, to be able to take this out. And there's a couple of ways we can do it. Here's the fastest way. Notice I'm working on my background layer. I'm going to make a selection of just that area. So I've got my rectangular marquee. I'm going to click and drag. And just kind of click over that particular area. Now one thing I can do, let's see if it'll go edit and okay it's changed up. Forget that I said that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the delete key and it's going to bring up my fill options. In Photoshop, whenever I delete something, it needs to know, well, what do I want to replace it with? What do I want to fill it in with? By default, you can fill it in with white, which in other words, we just erase out these pixels. The one I want you to choose is Content Aware. This is kind of a fancy new tool in the newest versions of Photoshop. Content Aware, with that selected, is going to look at the pixels that are around this image and it's going to fill in that one with those selected pixels. Let's see what happens when I do that. We'll say OK. Voila! You can see it's filled in with that particular edge. Now notice that it's still kind of picked up on this edge. But again, that grip is much, much more gone. Much, it looks a whole lot better from there. Final thing that I would do with this one is I'd like to straighten it up. You can see that the uh, whoever is taking it was probably on a boat, so it's, it's at a slight angle from here. Here's the best way to recrop something and to straighten it while we're doing it. We're going to use the crop tool. And that's this funny looking one on the left hand side of your toolbox. If you don't see it, it may be hiding under the slices tool. We're not going to use slices for this class. The crop tool is what we want. From here, I can click and drag, and it works a lot like the marquee tool. When I let go, you can see it'll blank out a certain area. Literally, crop tool does what the name says. It will crop out the area that we don't want. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this outer area. Bring it in just a bit. Here's the best thing. I can rotate my crop tool. If I move my arrow or my marquee outside of it, I can click and drag and adjust the rotation of it. You can see I want to get my guidelines to kind of match up to it. So let's see. Looks pretty good right there. Notice that my crop is going slightly outside the edge, so I'm just going to bring that one in. Make it as big as possible. Now to accept that change, I can click on the little check mark, or you can hit the return key on your keyboard. It does the same thing. Now it's cropped and straightened at the same time. Pretty cool. All of that's done using the crop tool on this side here. Just click and drag and it'll crop out whatever area that you need from there. By the way, if you want it to be a certain size or a certain uh, pixel dimension, let's say I wanted this to be a 3 by 5 photograph, you can type in a specific width and a height. So let's say 5 inches wide and 3 inches tall. Now when I click and drag, it's going to constrain my proportions to keep that a 3 by 5 image. So I can't like make it too tall or too narrow. It's going to keep it like that. So when I send it off to a printer, I know I've got a perfect 3x5 image just like there. Real simple, real cool. Any questions before I move on? All right, so that one's good. Showing you how to adjust the levels on something, how to do some content wear, how to do some basic, basic cropping for that particular tool. We'll hit Don't Save for that one. Let's open up this one. This is another common problem that our levels will be able to uh, to help us out with. <clears throat> when someone gets something developed, a lot of times um, the, uh, the emulsion that they, they develop it from kind of goes off or gets askew and it will develop this red cast to it. Sometimes they may actually leave a, a red filter over it. Here's how you can get rid of this red tint or any other particular color type of tint. There's two different ways you can do it. First of all, we can bring back up our adjustment and our levels. Here's that histogram again, and you can see it actually has a pretty good range. It's got a lot of darks and a lot of lights. But this is for all the different uh, color values that we're looking for. I'm going to change the channel that I'm working on. Right now it says RGB, red, green, and blue. Why RGB? Throwing this question out to y'all. Why do you think it's red, green, and blue? Mm, close, yeah. Uh, any image, any JPEG that you ever work with that's, uh, on, that's being shown on a screen only has red, green, and blue pixels making up that image. 
So you're working in RGB color mode. Now if you're getting it printed, it would be CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But since this is a digital image, we're using art, red, green, and blue. Let's choose the different channels. So here's red. Ah, you can see the red. So I'm going to click and drag this one into there. Look at the image now. Much, much better. Let's even go into some of the green. Eh, green. We could lighten it up a little bit. Let's bring it in here. Blue. Ah, lots of kind of blue shifted. Now look at that image. Skin tones look a whole lot better on this one than it did before. We'll say OK to that. So here it was before, and here it was after. All I did was adjust the levels from there. Easy, easy breezy. I'm going to show you how to do it even easier. I'm going to undo. Let's bring back our red image. <clears throat> if you'll go back up to image, there's three options. Auto tone, contrast, and auto color. These things uh, allow the computer to do the work for you. So I'm just going to choose auto tone and see what happens. Instantly, one click, fix that image 100%. I can even choose auto contrast, not much to change up. Same way for auto color, won't do too much, too much of a difference as well. Sometimes these auto corrections don't get exactly what you need to it. Sometimes they do. Next thing I would do is there's some scratches on here. I won't get into uh, how to adjust the scratches, but you can go in and clean those up as needed as well. Let's see. Let's hit Don't Save. Let's look at this yellow cast one. This is another one that would probably benefit from some, uh, some auto correcting. So, got that. Remember, we can always adjust the levels. Let's do auto tone and color. Let's see what happens. Auto tone. Hey, you got rid of most of it. Still a little yellow. Let's do auto color. Still pretty good. Got rid of most of the yellow. It's actually gotten rid of most of the color from the image that we want. And uh, that's something I definitely don't want to get rid of. I want to make these colors pop out. Here's how you can make an image's color really, really pop. Let's go back up to image and adjustments. This time we're going to adjust the vibrance of the colors that are on our image. So with vibrance selected, I've got two little options to choose from the vibrance and the saturation. For mostly we're going to work with vibrance. Let's bump it up a little bit. When I slide this slider up, you can see now I'm starting to bring back a lot of the green that was in here. I'm even picking up some of the red. And you can also change up the saturation, make it much, much more saturated. There we go. Now you're seeing the blues in the skies. Everything else is really starting to pop out. If you went the opposite way, you'd just be creating a black and white photograph. So bumping up the vibrance and the saturation will bring up the colors within an image that you have. So if someone took a picture of you, you want to make it ultra colorful, almost candy cane type looking, this is what you would use as your vibrance. So here it was before, very dull colors. Here it is after, colors are popping out much, much nicer from there as well. All right, so that's how you can do the adjustments for that one. Again, that was under the vibrance selection. I'll close this one out. <clears throat> Let's get into some uh, some harder stuff that we're working on. Uh, oh, excuse me. Let's do the family picture. Yeah, this one's got the most most problems with it. All right. I'm gonna zoom in. Now you can see this does have a lot of problems. It's got tears. It's got scratches. It's got a lot of different things that you'll need to do with it. Just looking at it, I can see it's a very dark pixel or picture. So let's see what our histogram looks like. Go back to levels. Ah, you see there's not a lot of dark pixels. So I'd want to grab this yellow, uh, white one and bring it in. Automatically, you can see it starts to lighten that up all, all together. For our tools, our retouching tools, the ones especially that I cover in the notes, these are found on the left-hand side of your toolbox. If you click and hold, it's this one right here. Um, there's the healing brushes, spot healing and regular healing. There's the patch tool. Underneath these, there's the clone stamp tool. Be sure you choose just the regular clone stamp. We're not going to use the pattern clone stamp to, uh, to work with from there. We're also going to work with um, these two tools down here at the bottom. There's the dodge, burn, and the sponge tool. And these are also some sharpening and blurring type tools uh, you can use at your discretion. Let's have some fun with the, uh, the clone stamp first. The clone stamp works just like a regular brush tool. If you look in your options, you can see you can adjust the size of your brush. Let's make one that's pretty big. We can see what we're doing. And just the uh, hardness or softness of your, of your edge. To use this one, 
you're going to select a specific area. In this case, I'm going to choose his face. And when I click and start to paint again, it's going to copy the pixels from one area onto another one. Here's how to do it. Here's the only thing you've got to remember when working with the clone stamp tool is the option key. Holding down your option key is going to give you this crosshair for your, your cursor. I'm going to click once right in the middle of his face. Now when I let go of my option key, you can see when I move over, I kind of get an image preview of what it looks like. So when I click and drag, I can very quickly paint in his image onto this area. And if you look real closely, look on his, on his face, you can kind of see there's a crosshair that's following his face to give me an idea of where I'm pulling these pixels from. So if I move off, there's his hair, you can see what I'm copying and where I get into. So when I let go, it's made a copy of it from there. No matter where I move, it's going to reference it based on uh, where I held down the option and selected my pixels. Excellent, zoom in. So if I want to copy her face, option, click on it. Also, option and doing the um, scroll wheel will zoom in. That's what's happening. Let's click on her face. I can click and drag and make a copy of it from there. Okay, all good. But what does this have to do with being able to retouch up an image? So I'm going to undo, let's back up and get rid of those. If you wanted to get rid of a scratch on an area, say I wanted to get rid of, this is a good scratch to work with. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, just big enough to cover this area. Rather than painting in a particular color, I want to pick up all this good texture that's, uh, that's made up on the, the photograph. And so what I'm going to do is to copy that area. So I'm going to hold down my option, click on this empty area. Oh, stop zooming in. <laughs> now I can repaint over this area, and it completely fills it in, and it looks natural because I'm picking up all those pixels as well. So now that scratch is completely gone. You can do the same thing on these other areas. So I'm going to pick up this one and just paint over very quickly, I'm getting rid of all the white marks, white areas of an image. By the way, if you have an old like high school or junior high photograph and you've got like pimples all over your face, this is a great way of getting rid of pimples too. So, the thing to remember about using this tool is you want to work in areas that are close to what you're, you're working on. Let's say you can see uh, this area is much, much lighter. If I was to sample this area, and then go over to this darker blue area and start painting in the pixels, you can see you can tell a difference. And you just don't want to do that. So I would sample an area that's close to what you want to get rid of. And you may have to actually resample several times to get a good rendition. Now be careful you don't accidentally make a copy of the line that you're redoing. That'll pick it up from there. So that's essentially what the clone stamp allows you to do. To build on those, these other tools that are above the clone stamp, your spot healing and your healing brush, they're going to do the same thing, but they're going to do it a lot easier way. Let's use just the regular spot healing brush. Oops. With this one, uh, let's see, I'm going to zoom into this particular line. Uh, give me one second to, uh, there we go. Okay. With the spot healing brush, <clears throat> this takes out one step from using your clone stamp tool. Rather than holding down the option key and selecting an area, I can highlight over an area. In this case, I'm just going to click and drag over this entire scratch. And when I let go of my mouse, the computer is going to automatically look for the pixels that are around this area and pick up just those pixels. So now I'm going to let go of it. And voila, one step, it automatically took out that entire thing. Let's click and drag over this one. I've got that one taken care of as well. Now this especially comes in handy when you go over sensitive areas like people's faces because you, you don't want to just pick up one area and have to resample and have to get his hair and then have to be careful to get his skin. So I'm just going to click and first of all make my brush very, very small, just large enough to cover the scratch. Let's see if I can take out this entire line. When I let go, boom, instantly. 
can tell it just a little bit right there, but it did a great job. I didn't have to worry about resampling. Ooh, let's do over her face. This would be very difficult to do if you had to do just the clone stamp. With this one, all I had to do is paint over it. I'll let computer do the work for me. Instantly took it out. You can see I get a little bit of artifacting. You may have to go over it a couple of times, but it'll blend it out as, as needed. From there. Perfect. Let's see if I can do a larger area with it. Now this does break down if you do try to do um, a really, really big area. If you really want to make somebody look kind of um, really weird, just go ahead and just block out their eyes. And it takes them out and it blends it in really well as well. Take out noses, those type of things. Ha ha ha. Okay. So that's what the, uh, the clone stamp, or excuse me, the healing brush do it, does, the spot healing. The healing brush is exactly like the spot healing brush, except this one gives you the option to choose the pixels that you want. With this one, you've got to hold down your option key, choose the area you want to fill it in with, then paint over it, and it'll do all the blending for you. You can see I accidentally picked up some of the other. So if I paint it over this one, automatically it fills it in as well. So holding down Option, select an area, fill it in with those pixels, and it blends it in pretty good. The, um, the healing brush gives you a little bit better consistency than the spot healing does. The spot healing just works faster. So whichever, I'm going to leave it up to you to, uh, to do it that way as well. Next tool, let's say you had a large, large area that you wanted to get rid of, say this, uh, this particular one. Let's use our spot healing brush, see what happens if I just clicked over and painted out this area. Sometimes it helps just to play around and see what happens. Hey, not too bad. Let's see if I can do it even better. I'm going to use my patch tool. Patch tool will allow me to click and drag over a certain area. So just like your lasso tools that we learned, when I let go, I've got my marquee. Now with this one, let's look up at the top. We've got two different options to keep in mind. You've got a source and a destination. This is what happens when I click. I've got source selected. Click and drag from here. You can see it starts to move, and it gives you a preview of where you're moving your selection to. Literally, what you're going to do is move it to an area that has similar pixels, so in this case this area of her dress looks pretty good, and when I let go of my mouse, the computer is going to blend in that particular area. So if I wanted to very quickly get rid of this entire area, I've got it selected with my patch, source is selected, now I can click and drag over and blend in, and that entire area is now taken care of, all with the patch tool. If I had another area, say I want to get rid of this little water stain, I'm going to choose the destination. This time I'm just going to select some pixels over here. Now when I click and drag, you can see it's following, it's, it's picking up those pixels, and when I let go, it's going to paste them on top of there and blend them in from the background as there. That's what that tool is allowing you to do. This is also great if you wanted to take off someone's head and place it on top of someone else. And it does a pretty good job of blending it in from there. You know, you can move it around, those type of things as well. So that's what the patch tool allows you to do with that one. Any questions on those particular tools? All they're doing is they're copying and pasting pixels, same way for the clone stamp tool. I really wish they would group these both together, but meh, I, I, didn't, I didn't make the software. Let's close this one down. Uh, let's see. Touch up, man. Yeah, you know, let's do the parents tool. All right. So for this one, first of all, I see it. I've got a lot of little things up here. These would be great just to grab your spot healing brush, click on them, and they're gone. Click and gone. You could spend lots of time just clicking and getting rid of stuff. Works out really well. What I would like to do with this one is I see it's, it's really faded and I'd like to kind of bring it back to a good sepia toned image uh, photograph. You all know those old timey photographs that are slightly brown? Well, if you ever seen one of those, they're called a sepia toned image. Uh, sepia is, uh, do you all know what sepia stands for? Anybody ever have to take Greek? Okay, 
in Greece, uh, there's a, um, I think it's either a fish or an octopus that it squirts ink, and they use this ink, uh, it's very brown, as a writing type of ink. And so when they started to develop old photographs, they used that ink for photograph development, and so that, thus giving it that brown type texture. So when you get a sepia toned image, that's where it comes from. Let's turn this into a black and white image. So I'm going to go back up to Edit and Adjustments. What I want to select is to desaturate. Desaturate is going to take away all the color that's on my image. So now I've got just a true black and white type photograph. Let's adjust the levels to it. Let's do auto tone, see what happens. Hey, pretty good. It's got a lot of darks and a lot of lights to it. Now if I, if I look closely on his face, his face is pretty dark to begin with. I, I've got a lot of shadow, uh, not a lot of highlight. Here's how I can paint in some shadows and some highlights to his particular photograph. That's where these tools come in handy. I'm going to click and hold. You've got three different ones, a dodge tool, a burn tool, and a sponge tool. The dodge and burn tool are the two opposites. I'm going to do the burn tool first. Burn tool looks like a hand holding um, an O. Allows you to uh, make an area of your pic picture much darker. And let's see, I've got a huge brush. Let's bring the brush size down. Yeah. So I choose my brush size, choose the hardness of it. The thing to remember about this one is what range you're working in and what your exposure is. I'm going to change it back to midtones for now. I've got a low exposure, I'll bring it up. So with my burn tool selected, whenever I click on an area, it's going to make that area slightly darker. And you can adjust how dark or how quickly it becomes dark by adjusting your exposure. So if I bump this up to 100%, you can see it's going to get very, very dark very, very quickly. Let's undo that. If I brought it down, it's going to slowly, slowly build it up. I usually try to keep it around 20% for whatever I work on. It's just a good medium range to work with them. Also, what range you're working with them. Uh, so if I just wanted to burn the highlights of his, of his head forehead, I can burn that in and it really won't touch the, uh, the darker areas. If I want to make shadows darker, I can choose that and now the darker areas of this image are getting really, really dark from there. So what, what would you want to use this for? You would want to do this to bring out the definition of someone's face. Uh, when you take a photograph of someone, <clears throat> you want to make the high points of their face, so their cheekbones, the nose, the forehead, the lightest areas of, a, of someone's face. You want to make the um, what I call the crevices of a face, underneath their eyebrows, underneath their chin, underneath the nose, the darker areas. Having those areas dark and the other areas light really makes someone's face pop out. So her face is kind of covered in darkness. The opposite tool is the dodge tool. This is going to lighten up your image. It looks like a kind of like a lollipop at the end of the stick. So I'm going to choose, let's say, my midtones. Let's bring up my exposure. Change the size of my brush. Now when I click, I'm going to make just her nose and her forehead slightly lighter. Don't want to get too carried away. Make her cheeks a little bit lighter. So now she's going to pop out a lot, lot more from there. They're already pretty dark, so I'm not going to have to burn in too much. But whenever you do image correction, that's what you're generally looking for. And this will do it on just a specific area. You can also make the background of someone a little bit lighter. It makes their head pop out a lot more from there. The sponge tool works with color. If you wanted to saturate an area or desaturate an area, I'm going to choose the sponge tool. Well, I don't have a lot of color. Let's open up a colored image. Let's see what we can work with. Uh, yeah, I'll open up that red cast one again. So with this one, if I wanted to make the colors a lot less saturated, I've got my sponge. I'm working in desaturate mode up at the top. Now when I click on this area, it may take several clicks. You can see it's taking away the color from that area specifically. So I can very quickly desaturate that area. If I chose to saturate it, well, it's just going to brighten up those colors a lot more. So now I'm clicking on it and saturating that area as well. So if you wanted to draw someone's focus to an image, one way you can do it is by making a lot more contrast, bringing up the highlights, pushing back the darks. 
Another way is to make something a lot more saturated. So if you wanted to take a photograph of yourself and have someone really focus in on you, I would saturate around the eyes, make your eyes pop out a lot more colorful um, than the rest of the picture itself. All good? Everybody's cool on the, uh, those two tools? Bur Dodge and burn is, uh, makes it lighter and darker. Let's see, I think the last thing I need to show you is how you can actually recolorize an image, give it a sepia tone. This is what we're going to do. So I've got my image, it's black and white. Remember to do that, we went to adjustments, and we desaturated it. Now to add back in some, uh, some information. To do this, I'm going to choose photo filter. With photo filter selected, it brings up my option box. There's several filters we can choose from. <coughs> And here's where you adjust the density of them. When I drag it up, you can see it will start to colorize the image based on whatever filter we had selected. By default, one of the sepia tones, there it is, there's sepia. With that one selected, I can now add back in that good, rich brown color that we had. If you do it too much, you can see it kind of uh, gets away from you. Back it off just a little bit. So now it has that kind of filtered colorized type look from it as well. So that's how you can filter the image. I won't save this one and we'll drop that one back as well. Last thing, because I know this is going to be the, uh, the toughest one, is this one that's broken up into several different pieces. Let's drag this one into Photoshop. This is going to kind of test your knowledge on all the tools that we've used previously. So what you're going to have to do is to select each of the individual pieces and I'm going to, I would want you to put them on their own separate layers. So you remember the selection tools. I'm going to use the quick selection tool because it's the fastest. Let's zoom in, say, this particular piece right here. I'm going to click and drag and just select that particular piece. I've got it selected. Notice I'm working on the background layer. So if I go to edit and I cut cut the image out. I'm not going to worry too much that I've left a little bit of a line. But if I paste it again, now this image is on its own layer in layer one. I can choose my move tool. And I can move it into place where I think it should be. Now I notice it's covering up right there. Maybe I need to cut out all the other pieces. So let's, um, let's go ahead and get this whole big piece right here. Got my selection tool. Uh oh. It's going too fast with it. I know why got the wrong layer selected. Make sure you're working on the background layer when you cut these pieces out. There we go. Just click and drag over the entire thing. Does a pretty good job. Remember the keyboard shortcut to cut something is Command X. So I've cut it out. Keyboard shortcut to paste, Command V. So now if that one's on top of that one, I'm turn off my bounding box. I'm going to put layer one underneath this layer. So now that it fits perfectly up into there. Pretty good. You would do the same thing, selecting the background layer, cutting out the individual pieces. Cut, paste. Make sure you can see them. Move them into place. And once you've got it all put together, the last thing you would need to do is to stitch the seams together. And we can easily do that using our tools. Before we do that, since we're working on multiple layers, let's flatten the image. Let's all work on the same layer once it's done. Here's how you can flatten an image. <clears throat> Go up to Layer. At the very bottom, choose Flatten Image. This is going to take all of your layers and convert them down into one solid layer. Does that make sense? From here, all you've got to do is choose your healing brush or spot healing brush. Click and drag over, and then clean up that image as best as possible. All good? Any questions about this? Y'all think you can handle it? This is, these projects are the only thing we're going to be working on for this, uh, for this entire week. So I think I've given you enough. If you don't finish them today, you've got next class period to also work on them to work from here. Oh, let me show you one last thing just to make it simple on you. When you upload these, I want you to create a compressed file, a zip file. So when I click on this one to, uh, to upload it, I want to ask you to make sure that you're only saving your JPEG. So once you're finished with these, save them as a JPEG to the folder, and um, you're going to compress the folder. Here's how you can make a compressed folder. 
So in my case, I've got all my restoration pictures saved out. I'm going to get rid of this zip file. Save to this folder. Hold down your Option key, excuse me, your Control key, your Control key. Click on it, and one of the options is to compress the name of your file. With this one selected, it's going to create a zip file of what you've uh, what you've saved up. This zip file is what you're going to upload to Moodle once you've finished. If you need me to show you that again, I'd be certainly happy to. What I'll do is I'm going to turn your computer back over to you, give you time to, to work on this.